In this video, I'm going to show you how to create these awesome shadow effects and review the new plugin for After Effects, Shadow Studio 2. not sponsored it's not an ad i want to start sharing more tools that i find really useful and that you'll likely find useful too and spoilers i like this one so i did reach out to plug in everything and managed to get an exclusive discount code that i will share at the end so here's how it works in this comp i've got a background and a text layer and i've got some basic animation on this text layer i'm animating the tracking amount so the letters start far apart they can get close together and then i've got it scale animating slightly down as well just for a bit of flavor for this video. Then in our effects, let's go and type in Shadow Studio. And with one click, it's already applied a really realistic looking shadow. So if I was to recreate this without the plugin, here's how I'd do it. Let's hide this effect for now. I'd have the drop shadow effect, duplicate it and increase the distance and the softness. Do that again and just keep increasing the distance and the softness till we get a look that we want. Now you can get a pretty good effect with this technique, but it does take much longer to set up so that it actually looks decent. And in Shadow Studio 2, we've got a whole bunch of settings to adjust and manipulate the shadows as well that we just can't do with this method. So let's get rid of these and back to our Shadow Studio version. And let's explore some of these settings. I'm gonna come back to shadow type a little bit later, but for angle, we've got the direction of the shadow points. We can even animate this. At the start, let's keyframe this and put its value at 90. And then at the end of the animation, let's put that at 160. So now the angle changes throughout the animation. Now this is already looking so much more exciting than just the text is on its own. I've had tons of client projects where there was essentially no budget. So we had to use a lot of text on screen and adding shadows like this is definitely something I would add to increase the production value and make the animation look a lot more expensive than it actually was. Now over here, we've got our shadow distance as well, which of course increases how far the shadow goes away from our source. We can increase the softness as well to make it more softer or decrease it to make it look sharper. And as we start to get really low, we can see how this effect is working. It's got a whole bunch of duplicates of our layer sort of stacked underneath it. And then we've got our color. Now, I probably recommend you change this from black to something that's a very dark version of your background. So I'm gonna eye drop here and then choose something that's almost black. Maybe push it a bit more blue here. So it's just very slightly tinted and a bit of a cooler shadow. And that's just gonna add a slightly bit more realism to the lighting because shadows are rarely 100% black. And if you want a cooler shadow, you can you know, move this up to red and you get a slightly different look. And you could also try it not being that dark and maybe choosing a real contrasting color like this red and you can get some really cool effects by having a really saturated shadow. Or you could eye drop the color of your text and you get this real sort of ghostly look, which is really interesting. Let's go back to our cool dark blue color, click okay. And then we've got opacity start, which is how dark the shadow is close to the text, turn that to zero or turn it way up and then opacity at the end as well. I might turn that down just a touch. And then in easing, we've got a little setting here to show how quickly it goes from the opacity at the start to the opacity at the end. And there's some advanced settings if you really wanna go deep on that. And then we've got quality. So let's turn the softness down so we can see our samples. Right now we've got 36. And as we decrease that, the fewer copies the effect is working with. If we turn the softness back up and decrease the samples, we can see the quality isn't really changing that noticeably, but it is making our shadow lighter. So you would have to adjust that by increasing the shadow opacity at the start and at the end as well. And then in resolution, we're only at moderate resolution here. So we can put this at low or even draft. At draft, we can start to see a couple of things that we don't like around the text here on the top left, but even at low resolution, it's pretty indistinguishable from extreme. So you could definitely turn these down a bit if your animation starts to chug in the RAM preview, because once you apply this effect to a lot of layers, it probably will start to slow down a bit. But you've got lots of options to turn down the quality here and it still looks pretty good on some really low settings. And then under compositing, we've got source opacity. So we can turn that down if you just want the shadow and we've got shadow offset as well. Now there's an effect that I think pairs really well with this effect and that is bevel alpha. So let's add that from our effects panel and let's zoom in much closer. So here it is without and here it is with. So bevel alpha can look really cheesy if you don't use its settings subtly. It can look a lot like Windows 98 word art, but if you turn the edge thickness down really low, smaller than two, let's go to one. What you get is this tiny little highlight on the top left of your layer, and you can move the direction wherever you want as well. But we just get a one pixel thickness of a little highlight as the light's catching it. And that just adds a bit of separation for the background and makes it look a tiny bit more 3D. And let's put that above our Shadow Studio layer. It is really subtle, but I do think it helps it stand out. Now back to shadow type up here. This is the normal shadow type. We also have inner, which puts the shadow inside. Let's turn our distance way down on here. 
and maybe our softness too. And this is really cool for a cutout effect. And then we also have radial shadow as well, which is similar to the normal effect, except we have this center point here and our shadow is going to face away from this point. So if we put that in the middle of our layer, the shadow is gonna come outwards. So if you put that below your layer in the composition, you can get some really cool lighting effects. Let's go back to normal. And let's say we want to apply this shadow effect to some more layers. I want to turn on these square layers that I've got hidden and let's try to apply it to these. The best way to do that is on our main shadow layer, I'm going to select both of these effects and copy them, but don't copy them just with control C. You want to go up to edit, copy with property links or control alt C, select that and then select the two square layers and then paste with control V. And then in their effects control panel, we can see that the effect has all these red numbers, which means they have expressions applied to them. And all of those expressions are linked to our original shadow layer. So we can click our original source layer. And here, if we make any changes like the distance, it applies to all of our layers. Same with our color and softness and everything that we've copied. Now this technique has saved me probably months of my life in client changes alone. Now here are a couple more effects I've tried with this plugin. Here I've got a simple circle animation with Shadow Studio applied. And then I thought it'd be really cool if I added a fill on top of the Shadow Studio. And that just takes advantage of that really natural fall off and soft edges that we get with Shadow Studio. And also a gradient ramp that was the inverse of the background worked really well as well. I also used it on this waffle animation and I applied it to these three levels of waffles and the face to give it a cool 3D look. I thought this came out pretty well. So this plugin creates some pretty good looking shadows, but do you need it? Is it worth the price? Should you spend your hard-earned clams on some cool shadows? Shadow Studio 2 is $49, but with the code Marriott, you get 20% off using the link down in the description. So you're only paying $39. If you can see yourself using this in at least one client project, I think that justifies the price. You should be valuing your time at at least, at least $50 an hour. And the time you'll save seems like a good trade to me. Whenever I next get a dull client project that doesn't have the budget to spend a lot of time on, I'm probably gonna throw on some shadows to the text and then go for a long lunch. I give Shadow Studio four bats out of five. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I'll think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.